Hi, I'm Felicia. I'm Jake. And this is Via the Bus, and we're in Sedona, Arizona. Before we even thought about the bus, we were like trying to fit into the box that society kind of molds for us. You know, like you go to school, you graduate, you like get married, you buy a house, you have kids, whatever. So we we're like actively pursuing purchasing a house, and that didn't really fall into our favor. And uh, just felt like we had like a moment to kind of think about what we were doing and a 30 year mortgage and being settled down in one area didn't really fit what we really wanted. And we wanted to chase our happiness instead. So we were thinking about how can we reduce the cost of living? How can we make this work where we're full-time travelers, we're still actively a part of society in a good way <laughs> and still find the right balance to keep us happy. So I guess that's how the bus kind of got introduced us. You're like, oh, what is this whole schooly talk about? Like we could like try it out and we went and saw a bus. We just kind of pulled the trigger, huh? Yeah, I think the pandemic had a really big play into it. It seemed like the universe was just telling us like, this is not your past, this is not the time. You know, like it just kept falling through when we were trying to purchase a home and it gave us a different perspective on what we should probably be focusing on. I think we're a part of the new age nomads, like post pandemic nomads, and it's definitely a thing. Hi, we've been living in the bus for about eight months, and she is a 40 foot long Blue Bird International 3800. Mm -hmm. And we are parked on some dispersed camping outside of Sedona. And on the outside of our bus, we have five storage boxes and we have about 800 watts of solar on our roof. Okay, and let's take a look inside. Welcome to our schoolie. So whenever we were designing the bus, we wanted it to feel as if you were walking into a New Mexican like casita. We took a lot of inspiration from adobe style houses, which you see everywhere throughout New Mexico. And that's what we did whenever we were uh, doing the ceilings and the walls and the paints and the overall color scheme of the bus. Yeah, so starting with the front of the bus, we have a coat hanger with our curtain rod for privacy. We kept the front of the bus pretty much original and uh, painted it brown just to match the vibe in here uh, added some planters alongside of it to the right we have like our driver's seat we uh, enclosed our like wire box we made like a nitro up there just for like decoration and to my right is the workstation where i do all of my work from it pulls out on hinges and we designed it like that just to maximize the space whenever we're not using it above the workstation we have a 38 inch tv mounted to the frame of the bus and to the left we have uh, the living room where we spend a lot of our uh, communal time watching like tv or hanging out with friends yeah we watch a lot of tv we usually watch it whenever we have enough power to do so, so <laughs> on the opposite side of the workstation is the couch it does pull out to a full size queen bed Underneath it, we've had it like that just so we can maximize storage underneath there and put like all of our odds and ends, but also so we can accommodate other people who would maybe want to stay with us in the bus or friends. No, we haven't had anyone spend the night, but we have had like little movie nights with friends and like family. So I'm a New Mexico native, born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We love our chili there. <laughs> I am also a native New Mexican, born and raised <laughs> in Albuquerque. Growing up, I didn't travel a lot, so I think now as an adult, I have a huge passion for travel, meeting new people, exploring new cultures, exploring new foods for sure, <laughs> both you know in the States and outside of the States. I love to get creative, I'm a photographer myself, so it's a lot of fun to you know tell stories of the places that we go and the people that we meet and the places that we see. So I originally wanted to go into the forensic field, and I used to intern at the Forensic Crime Lab. I worked for the police department. I was actually a 911 operator up until we basically we moved into the bus. Being a first responder, it had its up and downs, but I think it ultimately showed me that I want to tap into more of my creative side. And 
I think working through the pandemic, because we were considered essential workers at that time, the pandemic really didn't change my career path, and it actually made it a lot more demanding. And I think just after countless months of 16-hour shifts, it made me realize what I just didn't want out of my career. And I think it, it was able to put into perspective, like much of the pandemic did, what's important in, you know, health and family. It, it didn't feel like I was living. And so I really had to think to myself, like, what does make me happy? And, you know, travel, photography, and living life on our own terms. And it's really hard to do that in the field that I had. So I, I made the decision to step back from a career that didn't serve me. And it was a privilege to be able to do so. And in the end, I, I think I made the right decision. Yeah. And then <laughs> on the flip side, Jake's definitely helped us. <laughs> you know, having, he yeah. had a background in construction yeah. and architecture. So, so I mean, building a house, that's all, that's all you can yeah. ask for. <laughs> Yeah, so my background in education and experience, I contributed to this whole lifestyle. Yeah, I got my undergrad, my BA in architecture. And I got my MA in professional architecture. So this is the heart of the bus. This was this was my baby whenever we were designing. I'm a cook myself. It's one of my many love languages is to make big meals. And when we were designing the bus, we knew that we wanted to have a really big kitchen. And it took up a lot of real estate in our floor plan. Over here we have our retro style fridge. We do have a really huge farmhouse sink. This thing is huge. It's like one of our favorite features of the bus actually. So whenever we were making the decision to get the sink, I knew I wanted a farmhouse sink mostly for aesthetics, but I think now it doubles as storage whenever we're driving. So all of our movable parts, you know, odds and ends, whenever we're getting ready to get into drive mode, we usually shove into the sink and it's you know, keeps everything from falling, keeps our breakables from breaking. This is actually the smallest one that we can find. They actually go up in size from here, which is crazy. It seems massive to us. I think it was something like almost 200 pounds. We had to build an entire platform to be able to actually have it safely in here, you know, with the turns and whatnot of the bus. You know, pull out spice rack. Uh, one of our more recent additions to the kitchen is this five foot spice rack that is above the stove and the sink. It makes all of our everyday spices way more accessible and you know we don't have to take any of those down whenever we drive so it's pretty convenient yeah we have a pretty standard three burner range stove extra storage this is our pantry and my favorite part of the kitchen for sure is going to have to be the coffee bar this is a little gift from jake for my birthday some cute little shelves and holds all of our little knickknacks and whatnot now for a brief message from our sponsor patio well are you a mess? Is your outdoor space a mess? Clean it up with the help of a Patio Well Metal Outdoor Shed. It's a sleek, multifunctional storage room. Use it to store gardening supplies, adventure gear, and more. Use it to support your small business or as a secure way to lock up your trash cans. No matter how you use the Patio Well Metal Shed, you can rest easy. It's made from super sturdy, thick galvanized steel that's rust free and UV resistant. Even better, it's both moisture and waterproof. Ooh, nice. It's easily lockable too, so your things are safe from animals or creepers. Ours is five foot three inches and 14 and a half square feet, but with an impressive 67 cubic feet of storage capacity. Just the right size to fit next to your tiny house parking spot. Get your DIY installation friendly patio well metal outdoor shed today. See the link in the description. And on the other side of the kitchen is actually gonna be our wood burning stove. We just recently actually put this in the bus and this, there was a lot of love that went into this one. We handpicked the tiles when we were back in New Mexico. Uh, we wanted to have the terracotta vibe to again add to that New Mexico adobe style home feeling. Same with the teal colored paint on the on the cabinets and whatnot. The same tiles that we used here, we actually used on our backsplash behind the sink. Yeah, we built up this platform to hoist it up. We have a little bit of wood storage down here. It adds a really cozy vibe to the bus. We'll be watching a movie, we can hear the crackle of the fire. It keeps the place nice and cozy. This is definitely one of our favorite features of the bus, especially at the moment, it's been cold, pretty cold. <laughs> I am in the architectural field. I do work remotely. I'm a professional drafter, designer, junior architect, trying to work towards my licensure at the moment. 
that was fortunate for me that I am still able to use my degrees. But I mean, I started out in a typical office when we were building the bus and after I graduated, I ended up landing another job, the same field, architecture, design, out of California, and they had no problem with me being remote. I even shared with them, like, this is what I do, this is my lifestyle, that way there's no, like, for doubt, you know, just be transparent, and that's what I was, and I'm like, you, you can expect me in the office from this time to this time, yeah, or if need be, more, you know, I'm adjustable, so that has worked out so far, and along with that is having, like, a connection and equipment we got Starlink right away into the bus, and that's been working a lot lately. And there's been times where it's all like, do we have enough energy to do this? I can it's a bit of work. A yeah, so it's a little challenge, but it's a good balance. So it's definitely possible. Typical nine to five, Monday through Friday. Yeah, so 40 plus hours. And I mean, it's kind of like a blur, you know, just like. I'm working, but like my office is sometimes a beach or sometimes like a mountain range or sometimes like a middle like of desert, right middle of the desert around. or like forests, you know, so it's a good like balance. So I'd rather have my office like come with all of that. That's a perk in its own, you know, whatever interests you, there's opportunities to monetize that and make it work for how you want to live. Mm-hmm. And moving forward to the middle of our bus is our bathroom. We have this full size mirror. We still have this like theme of arches going on. One thing whenever we were designing the bus that I wasn't willing to compromise on was uh, not having a tub. So we ended up building our own tub. We did it with lime wash plaster, trying to give it the same idea, you know, Adobe vibe. We built these little nichos in the wall for all of our toiletries and whatnot. We have a little rain style shower head. And then right over here, we built our compost toilet. We kind of built that from scratch. A few little thrifted items in here, our little medicine cabinet and shelves, they're all thrifted. And yeah, we just try to give it like a really kind of like airy botanical vibe. This actually was the emergency exit of the original school bus and we decided to keep it and not really change uh, much about it. It still kind of opens up. So if we want to go on top of the bus, we can go through this little hatch, but it does let in some beautiful light, especially whenever like, you know, it's a nice warm day, we want to take a shower. Feel like it's kind of like an indoor outdoor shower type deal but yeah this is a a little fun part of the bus we added some like plants to you know just give it that really kind of airy vibe because so we have been living in the bus for about eight months now and the bathtub was actually the part of the bus that was not finished whenever we moved in so we recently finished the bathtub and i actually have not taken a bath yet but i am very much so looking forward to it i think it'll have to be saved for times whenever we're plugged in at like a rv park or like a campground unlimited access to water because we you know we're on that water conservation game right now and so we can't really do it very often it's one of the things that it's more of a luxury in the bus more than anything else Whenever we're on the road, it, it kind of functions just like the sink does as like storage for things that are moving and, uh, you know, keep everything from breaking and whatnot. But I am super stoked to actually get some use out of it. <laughs> and in the back of the bus, we have our bedroom. Um, this is the third and final room of the bus build. We wanted to have a larger space back here just because we wanted to feel like we had room to be comfortable in this living area of the bus. So this is kind of like the heart of the bus we have our bed platform and beneath this has like our 125 gallon water tank and our 400 amp solar system and all of our electrical stuff underneath it as well as also storage so it's a big big plus in the bus we also have a washer and dryer in our bedroom we have like a little cubby to my left and the dryer to my left as well underneath the bed and then directly in front of me we have our clothes and we have like hanging rod for like our clothes and we also have uh two shelves for clothes as well so the decision to have the washer and dryer was based off of just being comfortable i guess and being being able to wash and dry our clothes on the road it is not practical on the road so we have to kind of park and have like access to water and a uh, power to kind of run them although we have ran them on the road off grid before but it's a little bit easier when we have resources to run them how much did the bus build cost? <laughs> that... A lot of tears, a lot of <laughs> blood. A lot of sweat. <laughs> we tried to make it as cost efficient as possible, but I think like 
<laughs> with with all the perks that the pandemic kind of brought along, it brought along things like the insane cost of lumber. And so building, material. building, building materials skyrocketed because home improvements skyrocketed. And I think that was something that kind of contributed towards the total cost for sure. And then I think building out our, a bus this large, it's very expensive. <laughs> and we estimate that our, our build costs between 25 and 30, 35,000. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Felicia, like she said, she's really creative. So that her creative side really, really pushed like the boundaries of what we could do with this thing. And we kind of bumped heads a lot because I was like, that cannot Having work. Having a practical brain and a creative brain. It's an interesting it's cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we definitely, um, we had, I definitely the dreamer when it comes to the bus. We, we try very much so to bring a piece of our home, which is New Mexico with us into the bus, into the design and we try to make it feel like you, you're walking into like a New Mexican like casita. It feels it feels like home, you know, the turquoise colors, the outside of the bus, you know, the Mexican tiles, the wood floors. It feels like the homes that we grew up around and in, in New Mexico. And, you know, no, no matter where we end up going, we feel like we're able to bring a little piece of New Mexico with us on the road. We both put in a lot and I feel like both of our backgrounds really contributed a lot to what we're aiming at and mm -hmm. how it can like overall contribute to like the lifestyle we want and how we want to live and overall just being happy and who we are and we are together, you know. I feel like every nobody kind of has to have this characteristic is we need to be stimulated. We, we have so many things that we want to see and I think there's changing our environment pretty often kind of satisfies that need to, for yeah. adventure. I feel like we when like, we get bored easily. So like so we much, just like there's so much to do and there's so much to see, so many people to meet and I think that's where where the fun part is. Yeah, there's so much to see and only as long as short, keeps short amount along. of time <laughs> yeah. to do it in, you know? So the math's not mathing right now. So we gotta <laughs> keep on doing it. Yeah. our video and for stopping by tiny house expedition i'm alexis and i'm christian don't forget to like comment and subscribe and for more tiny home tours and stories click the videos below and join us on instagram for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us <laughs> we hope to see you there all right thanks guys have a good one